Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. In this video, I am going to demonstrate chord tone soloing over autumn leaves and share with you why I think chord tone soloing or chord tone improvisation, that is just being able to improvise over a progression with chord tones only and make it sound good, why I think this is the most important skill to work on for jazz improvisation. And you could argue uh, other types of improvisation, but we're talking about it in the jazz context. Here, I will be soloing over autumn leaves because it's such a standard, standard tune and progression and the same chord relationships in autumn leaves are also in thousands and thousands of other songs. So very useful tune to practice. And I won't just be improvising with chord tones anywhere on the guitar. I will be playing them in one defined position, in one area on the guitar using a specific predefined pre-decided chord tone arpeggio shape for each chord. This is very purposeful. It's so I am forced to use the nearest connecting chord tone shape on the fretboard, which means a few things. One, it prevents me from jumping around and only playing what I'm familiar with. Two, it allows me to connect melodies with voice leading, connecting to the closest chord tone when chords change, which sounds beautiful. You can unlock what I call built-in melodies by doing that. Number three, it forces me to get equally comfortable with every arpeggio shape that exists, which I can then later play anywhere on the guitar. Otherwise I'll avoid the ones I'm less familiar with. And number four, I find that it prevents me from just playing licks and instead I end up actually improvising completely original ideas. This of course comes after really getting very comfortable with the vocabulary and uh, getting it down. If you want a free PDF download of the exact chord tone arpeggio shapes that I am using, just click the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. So I'm just going to quickly outline what we're going to do in this video exactly. First, I'm going to demonstrate this chord tone soloing over autumn leaves while showing you on screen the exact chord tone arpeggio shape that I'm using moment by moment. You'll see what I mean as you see that happening. Chord by chord, I'm going to show you exactly the arpeggio uh, shape or pattern on the fretboard that I'm that I'm drawing notes from. And I'm going to stick, stick very strictly to those. And those are the ones that you can download if you want to. Then I'm going to talk about what actually makes chord tone soloing sound good because most people feel like it sounds and feels really limiting. So you'll see what actually makes it work is not necessarily the note choice, but actually the phrasing and the feel. And that if we can't make chord tone improvisation, just improv improvising with chord tones only, if we cannot make that sound good for us, it at least make something we're happy with. We might want more also, but if we can't make something that feels good to us in musical, then adding more notes is not going to help us. It's just going to actually make it harder. So the last thing I will say is I will just talk about how to start adding notes outside of chord tones, because of course that's desirable once you get those down, including chromatic notes, because it's actually quite easy to start adding other notes when you really, really get the the vocabulary of the chord tones themselves down and can improvise with them comfortably, smoothly, make something musical out of it. That's what we're going to cover. Let's dive right into it. So like I said, first, I'm just going to demonstrate simple chord tone soloing over autumn leaves. You'll see the chord on the screen. You'll see I'm using this app where you can see the chord that I'm on and you will see the diagram of the chord tone uh, arpeggio pattern or shape on the fretboard that I'm drawing notes from, and I'm going to very strictly stick to those. Here we go.
Okay, that was it. I played one note that was not in the diagrams that showed up on the screen uh, accidentally because I'm trying my best to stick to just those chord tones. This is the exercise. This is what I do on every tune. This is what I spend my time practicing because you can unlock all the, the playing you ever wanted to, any style, any sound. You know, I sound like me, but y anything you want to work on, anybody's method, any crazy chromatic stuff, it's all going to work uh, on top of the foundation of being able to do what I'm talking about right here. So the one note that I played, I played a major seven of E flat major seven up here, which is not in the diagram. Everything else was strictly, strictly, strictly only the chord tones, only the one, three, five, and seven chord tones of the chords on the screen with the diagrams that I showed you. So let's talk about what actually makes it work and feel good. And you know, it doesn't have to be your favorite thing in the world to hear that, but you can, you can hear that it's musical it works it is outlining the changes it it is getting into the center of what the chord progression and the composition and the song the harmony is asking for and there are built-in melodies we can get in there and express ourselves with the notes that are just already given to us and and this is my opinion that is the most central core thing to work on to unlock any other type of imp improvisation that we want to ever do so uh, the thing that makes it work, as I said already earlier, is phrasing and feel. So let's quickly talk about phrasing. Next week, I'm actually going to do a whole video on five different phrasing exercises. So I'm not going to go deep into it here. I'm just acknowledging to you that phrasing is the magic bullet for making something sound musical. And this can be a very loose term, and we'll talk more about it in my next video um, next week. For me, I just think of it as reacting to what I played before, making sense musically, just like when I'm speaking, just like if you're having a conversation with someone, you don't suddenly change topics in the middle of saying something. You know, that would be very awkward, very weird. You don't just get distracted and, and say, you finish off your thought, and then you can change the topic appropriately later if you if you finish the thought, if you finish the topic. So in music, this is what we're doing all the time. We're kind of like, ah, oh, playing a little something, playing a little something, playing a little something. So I just think of it broadly as reacting to what we played before. So um, you can do that rhythmically and and basically mimic or react to just some sort of phrase and think in these broad strokes. I'm basically thinking of the first eight bars as all one idea. Um, so I'll go... Da -da -da. So that really connected, right? I was like mimicking the same kind of rhythm. And while I'm doing it, just making sure I'm playing chord tones in per, for this particular exercise. But I do this kind of phrasing practice even with just atonal notes, any notes, because you can make a lot of musical sense if you are paying attention to phrasing. So more on that next week. It's 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 making sense in your rhythmic ideas it's reacting to what you played before finishing off ideas before doing something new and this can lead you down beautiful improvisatory paths where you're truly improvising because you're reacting to what you played and you're not just planning something out or playing something your hands are familiar with um and that's that's the fun of it uh the other big 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 thing is just what i would say is feel so phrasing and feel and feel is like how how solid is your time your sense of time and accenting and dynamics and slurs and just your touch and your tone these are all things that i would put into the category of feel so uh, i'm doing a lot of accenting a lot of accenting on the upbeats uh, down up down up down which you'll hear people say to do that for a jazz feel i'm not thinking about it i just have that as part of my sound and my feel that it's the way i play I also do slide into a good amount of notes or slur. I know I'm just doing it outside of the chord tones for now. So the feel is massive, massive, massive. Also, if you play with a good feel um, with random notes, it can sound very musical, even if you're not even doing phrasing. But the combination of phrasing and feel, that is the most powerful communication of music. Slap chord tones on top of that, and you're outlining the harmony of, uh, of an actual piece of music. Um, and that is what sounds musical. So that's, that's really just, I wanted to just introduce that those are the things that make it work and that can pretty much make any music work, whether you're playing harmonically or not. But let's jump to the third thing that I want to say. After you're, you're working on this and you're playing just chord tones and it might feel really limiting and it might feel really frustrating, but you add in some phrasing 
attention to that and it starts to sound more like music and you add in some feel and time and accenting and slurs and just your, your overall feel, finding a feel that feels good to you and it sounds more musical again. Well, still, I totally understand that we're not necessarily wanting to only play with chord tones. Um, so once you are really comfortable with those, I just want to demonstrate here for a second with this C minor. <laughs> Uh, if I was going up the C minor, this is one flat three five flat seven one of C minor. That's exactly chord tones landing on the third of F seven. So that's those first two chords. That's just what naturally happens. You'll naturally find those connections if you strictly practice over chord progressions with chord tones only. Well, if you're really really comfortable with them, then it's going to feel so easy to start to grab other notes, right? Because I was going to because there's something I call treading water where you kind of have to kill some time around a note that you know you want to land on a target. Some people talk about enclosures. That's kind of like an enclosure. I'm not thinking of the I'm not thinking of it as enclosure or practicing it that way. I'm just so comfortable with hanging around a chord tone that I need that I'm going to target and land on and uh, move, move smoothly to with voice leading from one chord to another, that if I feel that I have an extra eighth note, I can connect chromatically. So that alone, now I'm on F7, and I connect it to the third of B flat major seven, three, five, three, one, seven, one, seven, passing tone landing on the third of E flat major seven. Starting to add other notes will be, will be can be something you start to search for and might start happening naturally if you're super, super, super comfortable with playing with just chord tones. So uh, the other thing is if you want to play with scales and you know, say you know that B flat major scale works on these first four chords or these first five chords, um, then let's say I'm playing this. Here's F7. Here's that B flat major seven. And then back to chord chord tones. And I landed on a chord tone just from a scale, whatever I played, just scale down. And I landed right on the chord tone, the flat five of A. Now you don't need to be tracking every detail that I'm doing. My point is if you see the chord tones clearly, start there, see if you can get there. Because then if you if you run with scales, if you play if I played something. Right? If I play anything at all, it could be random, could be atonal, could be chromatic, could be a scale, could be uh, some kind of melodic scale pattern, could be adding chromatic notes. But if I'm always super, super tuned into where those chord tones are and I've practiced so much just connecting them, I can land on them and go back to that any time. And even if I want to play pretty out, I can be you know, hitting a chord tone going out, hitting a chord tone going out. So it's the most central core thing to work on. Quick little bonus tip here that I wasn't even planning on saying for this video, but the way that I practice this is I, I really try to be able to play constant chord tones. Constant. Da, 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 da. You can swing it too if you want. Da, 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 da. I'm on E flat major seven, A half diminished, D seven, da, 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 da. G minor seven. If I can play, and that obviously is not using phrasing at all, but if I can keep it going no matter what and connect by step when a new chord comes up, it is an amazing, amazing musicianship uh, exercise, benefit, skill to have that. Then you can really get to wherever you want to go from there. Again, if you want to download my chord tone arpeggio pack where I have written out for you every chord type, 12 chord types to play over any progression, all five of the arpeggio shapes that uh, those chord types that exist with those, each of those chord types. So you can practice getting them down onto your fingers. They're the exact ones that I'm using. They're the exact ones that I practice. They're how I've gotten to uh, be able to play over progressions and, and nail the changes and all of that kind of stuff. That's my chord tone arpeggio pack. You can get it in the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. It's totally free. So what was the biggest takeaway for you? Was it that chord tone soloing and chord tone improvisation is the most important thing you can learn for your improvising? At least that's what I believe. 
uh, is it that feel and phrasing are what actually make the music sound good and, and make it not sound like just an exercise. You can make real music with it because of feel and phrasing, or maybe it's just how simple it is that to start adding chromatic notes and scales and all the crazy complex stuff after you get the chord tones down. Let me know in the comments if something in there was valuable for you or if there was something that was a major takeaway for you. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week's lesson is on five phrasing exercises. So that's going to be really fun and super beneficial if this uh, any sort of lead improvisation is something you want to work towards. Hope to see you in that lesson. Thank you for watching. Take care and happy practicing.